Hello and welcome to Finextra. I'm Emily Haller and I'm here with Jeremy Light and Kim Berg of Accenture. And we're talking about APIs. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy, why are APIs important? APIs are important because we are in what is widely known as an API economy. And in fact, we are in the middle of what I call a Cambrian explosion of APIs. You know, life as we know it is changing with the digital economy. Uh, and in financial services, financial services is actually behind many other industries. Already, I think something like 15% of mobile apps have APIs in them and around about 25% of internet uh, websites. And they, both of those will increase to around 70% within three years. So you can see this rapid growth in APIs. And if you look at other industries, for example, at telecommunications, they have moved from being a dumb pipe um, to using APIs to re-intermediate themselves into their value chain. And I think telcos are making around, around about $100 billion a year, growing at 20 to 30% through APIs. So you can see there's a lot of value, there's a lot of demand, and there's a lot of uh, change going on. So Kim, how are APIs relevant to PSD2? Well, PSD2 encourages banks to create APIs and to open up access to the internal payment account capabilities. Um, under PSD2, uh, these features will however be quite limited um, and, and basic. They will allow third-party providers to obtain basic account information, to initiate simple credit transfers and to verify the identity of an account holder, for example. And whilst uh, APIs are a good technical solution to achieve PSD2 compliance, there is a much bigger opportunity here for banks to create a, a, a much richer set of functionality as part of their API capabilities that third parties can use and, and other new players can use in this new ecosystem that's emerging. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. The PSD2 really stipulates th or result in three types of API, whereas in banking there are hundreds of possibilities. And it's all part of this Cambrian explosion that uh, I foresee, or I see going on at the moment and will continue, particularly in banking. So what should banks be doing? Well, the more forward-looking banks are building API factories, not only for PSD2, but also for open banking. And there are a number of examples out there of banks that have started on this journey, like uh, BBVA, Citibank and Credit Agricole. And I really expect that there will be more banks to follow quite soon. The advantage of API technology is that it sits on top of the existing IT systems. So when banks launch uh, basic uh, API capabilities for PSD2 and open banking, it doesn't necessarily mean a large and expensive IT program. What are the implications for consumers and the banking industry? The easiest way to look at it is at the history of banking and where APIs are taking it. Banking started off with bank branching, bank branches, people would bank in their branches. Uh, that moved to uh, call centres and telephone banking. The next stage was internet banking, and now we have mobile banking, which is why, you know, wildly popular. The next stage with APIs is that you'll be able to do your banking outside of the banking environment on third-party applications. So it could be uh, a d department store app where you display your bank balance, tell you how much money you've got, so you know what you're going to spend, um, and uh, you could transfer money from a savings account to your current account to make a payment to the store all on that third-party application. So we'll be banking outside of the banking environment. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest changes we'll see in banking over the next two to three years. Jeremy, Kim, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you for watching.